Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm going to be talking about and demonstrating geosynchronous, kerbosynchronous, geostationary, or even Clark orbits. That is, the orbit which uh, has an altitude at sufficient height, or the exact height, where it matches the rotation of the planet which it is orbiting. Which means if you get an equatorial plane, the object will appear to stay exactly over the same spot. It's very useful for communication satellites. Now, the altitude over the planet Kerbin is 2,868.75 kilometers. Uh, and that's actually pretty easy. You can just put a single satellite up there. I, however, I'm going to just deploy three into this orbit with uh, equally spaced 120 degrees intervals. So that'll be, I mean, there's three of them forming an equatorial, an equilateral triangle, uh, which is really nice if you're using something like, say, remote tech, which builds up communication satellite networks. If you have three satellites spread out like that, you cover every longitude, all longitudes off the planet curve. Anyway, this is a standard launch profile. We are going to take this thing up. You see, I've, I've actually got to 100 and then I decided, oh yeah, why am I stopping at 100? No, I'm going to go all the way out to geosynchronous altitude, right? Which means we're going to keep burning until our Apple Apps height hits 2868.75 or at least pretty darn close to it right that will be our transfer orbit that brings us out there normally of course you would go into a stable uh, equatorial orbit and then you would transfer out to it you know so you could have system checks and things like that but i'm just heading straight up there because well you know we don't have to worry about system checks and things like that so there we go now once we hit there we need to set up a maneuver to kind of bring our orbit out a little. We're not going to go straight into a geosynchronous orbit at this distance. We're actually going to go into a four-hour orbit. Now, Kerbal's, Kerbin's uh, rotation is six hours, but we're going to get into a four-hour uh, orbit that hits geosynchronous altitude. And the idea is that we're going to pop up to geosynchronous altitude, drop a space probe, and you see we've deployed the... Uh, the uh, De deployed the solar panels here, right? And we need to deploy solar panels on both of, on a couple of satellites. This is our burn. Uh, I actually overestimated. I overcooked the maneuver node, so to speak. But that doesn't matter. I'm reading the numbers off of the window there, which comes from Kerbal Flight Engineer. It's not an autopilot. It is merely a readout display. This is entirely flown manually because, well, as I said, it's really easy to get things into geostationary orbit, and you should not be intimidated, right? So now we've got it out there, we need to deploy the solar panels on the other space probes behind it. Oh, the entire thing is being controlled by the the entire thing is being controlled by the the so powered by the solar panels here, so we need to make sure we always have them deployed. There isn't actually a probe casing on that main body, which uh, is kind of silly in retrospect. If I'd left a probe casing on there, I could at least have brought it back to the planet Kerbin. Anyway, this one is popped up at roughly geosynchronous altitude, so its job is to accelerate up to geosynchronous velocity, right? We want to circularize this orbit and get it as circular as possible, right? So the target is 2,868.75 kilometers. Uh, and from there, uh, that, means, that means that we have to average, right? The dif difference between our periaps and our apoaps has to average out to 2,868.75. You don't need to have your orbit exactly on it. If you have a difference in your periaps and your apoaps, what will happen is you'll librate back and forth in your orbit, but the period will still be six hours. So I now spend a whole lot of time trimming this orbit, trying to get it as circular as possible, right? Uh, and there's a lot of ways to do this. Not all of them involve firing exactly along the orbit. Indeed, you'll find that with the spacecraft, even with the tiny ant engine, once you get really close, there's ways to correct the orbit more precisely by firing uh, at angles slightly uh, outwards or inwards, depending upon where you are. Uh, it depends on how OCD you are. I mean, you could spend forever tweaking this orbit and getting it exactly where it is. The only thing is you don't want to take too long because you want to go back to control your main spacecraft before it pops back up and launches probe number two. 
that is your only time limit here. You can come back to your space probes after that if you really want. Now, uh, Kerbin isn't the only place where you can actually get into geosynchronous orbit, but not every planetary body in the Kerbal system actually allows you to do that because in the case of the Moon, for example, its slow rotation and small sphere of influence means that the geosynchronous orbit would be so far out it would be sitting outside the sphere of influence. But you can, if you want, sit exactly in the same orbit as the Moon and there's a couple of points where you can essentially stay tidally locked to it. Moho, on the other hand, because it rotates and doesn't isn't tidally locked anymore, uh, its geostationary orbit is beyond its sphere of influence. You can't get into orbit there. Anyway, I think at this point, I'm just uh, still tweaking the orbit a little here. You see me going back and forth here trying to figure out what they are. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, the, the geostationary launch, the little info window on the side, does not actually show me the the period, which would be really nice. Anyway, now we've got that, we let the, the launch bus go all the way around, and once we reach Apple Apps, that's when we're going to detach satellite number two, and it should be exactly 120 degrees behind because we've we've launched them into this four hour orbit. We deploy the extra pair of solar panels because it would be unfortunate if we ran out of power. <laughs> Not that we uh, really worry so much. In fact, honestly, we could detach all three satellites and just let them fly in formation, but there it goes. There is satellite number two. I'll guess call this uh, satellite Bravo in the in the Kerbocom, uh, I don't know, <laughs> the Kerbocom system. Obviously, uh, we're only going to cover equatorial or certain latitudes. There's a point at which you go too far north and you can't see the satellites anymore or they're too low on the horizon. Um, yeah, this time I actually use a maneuver node. You can tell when you're getting close to circularization because what will happen is your periaps and your apoaps will flip like that. That means you're pretty close. So from there, you can kind of tweak it. Get, get it 50-50 is a good bet, I think. Regardless, you know, I've got my got my orbit, my maneuver node set up, and I'm just trying to figure out the exact numbers here. We can afford to spend a little bit of time, but we want to get it as precise as possible. But I think we're ready. 170 meters per second. That should be no problem for that tiny, uh, tiny ant engine. Whole 1.5 kilonewtons, barely able to lift uh, an ant, right? Oh wait, it's appropriately named, isn't it? Except, aren't ants able to lift large amounts of mass, like more mass than themselves? I, yes. An ant will lift seven times its body weight, unless it's a Kerbal ant engine. So anyway, yes, take that quick burn, it's gonna take, take about uh, 27 seconds or thereabouts. And from there, we'll continue right now. It's also important to note that if you are doing things into a geostationary orbit, you need to absolutely have them on the equator or they will oscillate up and down. And that's generally not what you want, although it's what happens in practice. If you track many uh, you know, TV satellites or whatever, they will actually librate in like a, a figure eight pattern through a 24 hour cycle. And that's simply because, you know, keeping it exactly in position is a lot harder than just letting it kind of wander within certain constraints that are within certain ranges that make it more dynamically stable. However, there are actually geosynchronous or orbits that are 24 hour orbits that are purposely inclined to the planet. And a great example is the Sirius satellite radio network, which has three satellites that all pop up into the northern hemisphere over North America. And, you know, that's how they are served. Uh, apparently, Sir Sirius does this because, you know, it, America, the U.S., make continental U.S., isn't as far north as, say, large parts of, the, of Russia. In Russia, if they want to do this, they use something called a Molnia orbit, which is a 12-hour highly elliptical orbit with three satellites in it. And that's even better if you're at really high latitudes. But Sirius uses these 24-hour orbits, apparently. So I think I'm just sitting here kind of tweaking my orbit, trying to get it as close as possible. Not quite sure. You see, clicking back and forth, you see 27, 27. It looks like I'm about one second off. Now, one second off in a six hour orbit means that we are going to be one degree out of position uh, after about 60 orbits. 
that's just the nature of things. Although it's it's pretty accurate. I mean, if you think about it, that's what that's one part in about twenty thousand accuracy. So it's not too bad. And here's the final one going out for its trip. The launcher stage should really have uh, should really have I should have left a probe body on it so I could have deorbited it back to the planet Carbon, but. Um, I'm not that OCD, I guess, except when it comes to my orbits. <laughs> this one, I'm just guessing it by watching the orbit, right? Instead of instead of setting up a, up a maneuver node, I'm just going to poke it myself, you know, and watch the orbit in the map more or less live. Now, one trick, so I'm going to get this up 2720. We still need to go further out here. Got to get up to 2868.75. Actually, we need to go slightly further than that because we're in a slightly lower orbit at this time. So 2800, 2800, 2800, 2800, 2800, 2800, 2800, 2800, 2800, 2800, 2800, 2800, 2800, 2800, 2800, and you see how just we're so close to being circular. Right, what I've done here is I've brought up both maneuver nodes and you can see that it says three hours, 26 minutes and 14 seconds and they both say 26 minutes and 14 seconds. That means I've got it to within, you know, six hours plus or minus one second. And we can sit here and you'll notice that the last one, if you follow this launch plan, actually ends up pretty much serving the Kerbal Space Center. The first one is going to be 128 degrees around the planet, but this one is more or less directly above the peninsula where the Kerbal Space Center is. So that will be the linchpin to the comm system, if you're using remote tech or something else. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed this little lesson here. Uh, as I said, if you look at this, they will form into a three-point formation. Uh, they will fall out of synchronous over time. You can go and edit the save file if you really want, but uh, that's up to you. Depends how OCD you are about things staying perfectly in formation. Whatever you do, I hope you have find this useful. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.